Devina Mehra, founder, chairperson and managing director of First Global is with us now. Devina, wish you a very happy Diwali, first of all, from the entire CNBC TV18 family. Hope it's a healthy, wealthy, prosperous and positive uh, new somewhat uh, for you on all at home and all at work as well. Thank you, Sarabhi, and uh, wish you and the team at CNBC, as well as all your viewers, a uh, very happy Diwali and a uh, fab new Samvat. Uh, uh, health, wealth, prosperity, peace for all. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Absolutely, peace for all is perhaps the most important one now. So, I, I don't know, Devina, if you could hear that uh, poll that our colleague Nimesh just drew up, but basically it ended by saying the big expectation is that the new Samvat is going to be the year when large caps decide to catch up. Uh, do you think that can happen? Will it be time for the big boys to stand up and get counted? Uh, if you choose wisely. So first of all, of course, I mean, before talking of the new Samvat, I just want to tell the viewers that equity is not an asset class where you should be making decisions really year, year by year, because uh, we all understand in theory that equity is a volatile asset class. Uh, but I don't know how many people understand how volatile it, it is that the returns can vary not just from year to year, but from decade to decade as well. So you really have to have a really long-term view when you're talking equities. Uh, but coming back to where the markets are today, I mean, I, I have uh, never ever made a uh, uh, Sensex or Nifty projection uh, at Diwali time or in uh, at New Year time either, for that matter, because you know that is something you cannot know. You know, Daniel Kahneman calls it objective ignorance that to say something with confidence about something which you not only don't know but cannot know is is not sensible to say the least. Uh, but uh, as far as the market, where markets are poised, so coming back to what I was saying in, uh, in terms of the uh, variability in equity returns, we all have this figure of 15, 16% return in equities, uh, which is how the Sensex has compounded in 40 plus years. Uh, but, you know, the variation, I'll tell you how dramatic it can be. So if you look at the start of the Sensex, in if you'd invested 100 rupees in 1980, it would have become 700 in 10 years' time. If you had invested it in 2010, it would have become only 230 rupees at the end of 10 years, barely beating fixed deposit returns. So the variability is as high. And the point uh, why I was uh, citing this 2010 to 20 return, which was just a little over 8.5% uh, compounded, is that, that that meant that for a whole decade, the uh, equity markets were far below that trend line of 15, 16% compounding. So even after that run up from the COVID lows, we are still not close to the trend line. So the, the probability of a crash becomes high only when you are far above the trend line in most cases. So the risk of a crash doesn't appear very high to me for the mainline large cap indices. Again, as I said, you have to pick the sectors carefully. And uh, but on the small and mid cap size uh, side, the risks are much higher given the how they have run this year, and also given the history, because a lot of investors here may be new, new, they will not know the history of small caps. So, just to put things in perspective, from the 2008 high, the small cap index itself fell nearly 80 percent, 78 percent to be exact. And it took another eight years for it to come back to where it was in 2008. Yes. And then you had this bull run in 1718. And then again, a two thirds fall. So, I mean, okay. I hear now some managers and micro cap advisors saying I have compounded 50 percent in two years. But when something falls two thirds, it can triple and you will have, would have uh, made zero returns. Hmm. Hi, Devina. It's, it's good to have you in. Thanks so much for joining in and thanks for helping us, you know, jogging the memory back as well. There can be tough times, but in the longer run, I think things uh, look up. So, you know, let's let's talk about a couple of themes then. What do you like in the market right now? Uh, you know, if you had to pick that one particular sector, I don't know whether you're going to talk about stocks, but what would that theme be that you would like our viewers and investors, you know, to focus on, do some research out there, and maybe there could be some potential. So first of all, you know, whatever I talk about may not necessarily hold for a year because one other thing in markets are that themes change, whether it is 
sectors, whether it is geographies in terms of countries or whether it is you know, asset classes, uh, things go in and out of uh, fashion or in terms of how well they are doing. Uh, so coming back to what you were asking in terms of sectors, if I look at our present portfolios, our biggest overweight sector is industrials and capital goods. Now, the difference between us and many others were talking about that sector is that we went overweight in it in October 2021. So it's been over two years that we have been overweight. And the question actually that we ask every quarter is, that is the run over. Till now, our systems have not signaled that the run is over. So we continue to be overweight. We have trimmed, we have changed stocks. You know, that's been a brilliantly performing sector for us for two years because stocks have doubled, tripled, and so on. Uh, the what sure. we added more of in 2023 in terms of sectors which we still continue to like are auto, auto components, pharma. So very different from I, I saw those were supposed to be the dog sectors in your survey, but you know that's what our systems like. And a few construction stocks also we have bought uh, um, uh, banks where I'm always nervous or skittish investor. Uh, we don't like quite so much. I mean. Between the two, of course, we prefer the PSU banks. So that would be broadly the landscape of what we like presently. But as I said, you know, it's not necessarily a year-long call. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, that gives us a fair uh, idea, flavor of uh, you know how how your portfolios are positioned. Uh, Devina, just hold on for a second because we do want to talk to you about this whole mega PSU rally, and within that, I think uh, power specifically. Uh, just uh, the whole story in context, the fact that uh, the need is to move towards renewables, but the pressing sort of situation right now requires India to also up the thermal power capacity. Devina, you have any interest in, in power? If not power, any other PSU area? Because that's been the real sizzler side of the market in the last one year. Yes, I mean, as I said, the themes always shift. No theme lasts forever, so... You know, this, is, this has been another theme shift. Uh, so, I mean, as I told you, in banks, we have moved, uh, especially this year, uh, towards the PSUs more than the private sector. And at times, we have held some stocks in the, on the defense side also. Uh, but, I mean, this is not a, a theme we play in a big way because a lot of it is also news-driven. And you can't really only go by the headline, you know, given even this uh, news report that I was listening into. You know, in power, there are all kinds of things, not just funding, but also uh, whether you've got the coal linkages, whether you've got the environmental clearances, what's the quality of coal that you are getting. So I don't want to you know, do it on a broad uh, thumb rule or uh, seat of the pants calculation. So this, this, these things you really have to go into the depth. Uh, so, I mean, we, we, as I said, we bought the odd PSU stocks, but it's not like a big theme that we have played. Okay, all right. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Devina, for joining in and uh, you know giving us your view on markets and wishing you all the best for the coming year as well.